Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Grimwit from NatEvil.com and today we build. Start with five, five stacks of each. I'm going to need some, uh, some ladders for what I'm doing because we're doing some major construction today. Uh, that's one ladder, I need more. There you go. Okay, so here's the plan. Uh, you know, of course, that one of my challenges is to uh, is to build a big tower. No, here it is. Build a tower in the ravine. Thank you, Couchy2507. So we're going to do just that while mining for materials, because I mined a whole bunch of friggin' materials. I actually killed an Enderman, but it wasn't on screen, so I'm not going to count it. Damn it. I didn't mean for that to happen, but the thing was, uh, the thing actually joined me in my ravine. I have yet to name this ravine, so I'm going to leave that to you guys. What is the name of this ravine? Leave a comment if you know what the name is. Now here's the layout for the, uh, for the whole deal right here. This is what the, the tower's thickness is going to be. It's going to go straight up, uh, about 100 meters or so. Yeah, about that. So, without ado, let's begin. Whoa! Where'd you come from? Apparently there's going to be some extra construction being done here, or rather destruction, just to make room for uh, for my tower. What the heck? That's okay. We can deal with this. We're adults. Ah! <laughs> make it go away, mommy. Let's see here. We want this to be four high, right? So there's the fourth. One, two, three. We need another one. Uh, we need another layer of these. So this is going to take me a while. I might as well uh, entertain you guys a little bit with a little story. Um, you, some of you may know that I draw a comic, a rather struggling web comic called uh, Rats Eating Rats. And uh, eh, it's new, and I'm new to the game. So one of the things I wanted to do is uh, a lot of my story ideas are influenced from video games. I'm going to go through this later and add stuff like Windows. Well, the uh, video game I was playing when I was writing Issue 3 was The Void, and I don't know who knows The Void. I know DJ Kid does. Okay, that was dumb. <laughs> And, uh, the Void kind of exists in sort of a conceptual space. And I was thinking, okay, well, one of the main characters of Rats Eating Rats is a girl, uh, a teenage girl called Madge, who I wanted to kind of show her as starting from the very beginnings of a kind of magic in my world. And so I was figuring what would be really interesting for her. If I'm going to stick with the theme that I have now, uh, I have two other characters, Black and Red. Uh, Black is very intellectual, and Red, though, comes off as spiritual. She's actually very, uh, very uh, strong physically. So that was the idea, I would get mind, body, and soul in my, uh, in my characters. So if that was going to be the theme I was going to take, then I figured Madge needs to be actually spiritual. So I figured a good magic for her to practice then uh, would be uh, shamanism. She is a shamaness in training. I'm not even sure if this is the right term. So I need, wanted a conceptual space, kind of like the void, because that's a really good sort of uh, feel for what a spiritual realm would be like. And if anybody who's played The Void knows what I'm talking about, it feels like you're more in a uh, in a world of spirits and the dead 
rather than it does just some foreign land. It's very interesting, very deeply philosophical. If you want a good let's play of, uh, of The Void, or I, actually you should buy the game. You should just get the game, because the game is really, really good. But if you can't afford the game and you want a good Let's Play, and I love Let's Plays, uh, check out uh, Cannibal Canine's Let's Play of the Void. And you can find his Let's Play at uh, LPArchives.org. Dying here would be funny. Oh, that's too perfect. Man, look at that. Look at that, look at that. Oh my god, that's beautiful. I plan to put these these stone areas right here. This is going to be a floor. That that was the plan, is that to make these floors. If that's the case though, look at this. I got a perfect way to exit on either side of, uh, of the ravine. One side has all my materials, and the other side is the other side. And actually, I have plans. Uh, I have plans for this room over here, which I will show you once it's finished, but uh, let's call it a surprise. In any case, uh, so back to, back to Maj and her spiritualism ways. The idea here is to have a spiritual realm that Maj can explore and grow more powerful out of exploration. Uh, in fact, the nature of the land is that the entire land exists on a spiritual level. The nature of the land is that the entire land exists on, uh, on a personal level. Like, what does it mean to be a spiritual level? Well, it means that everything is very important to you specifically. Everything is very personal. Everything's very up close and uncomfortable and uh, things have to mean something. Things have to be emotionally important. There has to be that kind of connection, that kind of content, and I'm out of materials, damn it. You know, for the first time, I get to use the ladder, all right. Uh, we'll put it, put it right here. There. Okay, let's get more materials. Uh, the name of the land is officially the Mini Named Land which I know is kind of, uh, well, it, it makes sense. The idea is that the land is actually a whole bunch of, uh, it, it's actually the, a land that everybody goes to when they think of a spiritual realm, be it purgatory or, or whatever, the umbra. Everybody calls it something different, and there are plenty of religions being a spiritual land that cover this land, so... It's many named. It has many names. It has to have a, uh, many names. Do I hear spiders? Is there a spider that's coming after me? Is that what's going on here? Mm. Wow, my tower's coming up pretty good. Uh, unofficially, I call this land the Akasha. Uh, basically, another name for Aether, which is the substance that supposedly fills up space. But you know, space isn't full of the Aether, space is full of nothing. It, this was a little joke of mine. Th there's actually nothing in outer space, it's just a void. So, the void. But uh, rather than calling it that, I, I wanted to call it what other people called it, so I called it the Aether, because I think I'm clever. There we go. So what does it mean to be in the Akasha? Well, it means that things don't move on physical realms. And um, what is the purpose of the Akasha? Well, since it doesn't work on physical realms, it ha and uh, it is named, uh, at least personally, I name it the Akasha, uh, it is named after kind of the substance of all things. And as such, uh, it holds the quintessence of reality. Since everything has to be very personal, the lands of the Akasha have to be separated in emotional terms. Uh, I'm not a psychologist. I, uh, I studied psychology in college, but uh, by no means do I have any kind of degree. 
Uh, I still study psychology uh, with little articles that appear here and there on Read It or actually just wherever I can find it. There's also a, a wonderful website called You Are Not So Smart that has a lot of interesting uh, insights on psychology and the way the human brain works. And of course, my favorite, uh, my favorite take on anything human-related uh, is Radiolab from Radiolab.org. I love these kinds of things, uh, and I base m any and all of my story off of it whenever I can. Um, there's going to be some monsters going to come after me doing this, isn't there? I didn't think about that. I did not think about that. Err, shit. I need to get down. Okay. One of the names of the many named land is uh, the dream world. Because everybody who dreams goes to the many named land. Being a personal experience. Hey, it's looking pretty good there. I'm liking this. Cool, cool. Alright. Let's, uh, let's climb up and get back to work. The geography is split into six lands, and I base the lands off of human expression. There are six basic human expressions. Just so you know, this is how our facial features sort of work. Uh, I have already based characters off of things like this before. There is joy, anger, sadness, disgust, surprise, and... No, oh, there's another one. Come on. Brain not work. Where's my notes? Damn it. I hate doing this. No, 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 no. This is all wrong. Here we go. Uh, sadness, anger, fear, disgust, surprise, and joy. Ah. <sighs> All of these are basic human emotions as well. And everything, every uh, expression, and I contend, at least in this world, to the peak of my, uh, to the peak of my knowledge, that uh, each emotion and human expression is a mixture of these, of these six uh, fundamental expressions. I don't know if that's true. I don't claim to know if that's true, but that's what I'm going off of. And finally, the uh, the six lands, each based on its own ex uh, their own expression, has uh, has their own uh, person guarding each land, uh, kind of a ruler of the land, as it were. Think of the endless from uh, from Sandman. Uh, that's a good example, but. They're not so conceptual. They basically are uh, the the pinnacles of tho those emotions. So you have like the saddest uh, person in the world and the happiest and so forth. And then you have uh, finally uh, the four. Uh, I'm going to call them the four beasts, which are the primal four uh, of humanity. Whoa, whoa! You're not supposed to go there. Get out of there. The primal four focuses of humanity. Uh, I'm talking about the uh, very, a very primal sort of mythology based off of instinct. Uh, okay, our four primal instincts are uh, uh, what are known as the f uh, four Fs, and you guys know this one. Uh, fight, flight, food, and mating. Oh, and food time. Nom, 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 nom. So, what are the practical terms of knowing the Akasha, or the many-named land? 
In story, since you're dealing with the quintessence of reality, the practical terms is you have kind of a malleable magic to play with. Um, things are in flux in the Akasha. And they're in flux on purpose. Because just like a dream, you can do anything, you're meant to be able to do anything in the Akasha as long as it forms an expression of, uh, of you. Uh, in, in fact, the Akasha is sort of like... Um, it implies that the universe is an expression of humanity. And that humanity has created the very universe it exists in. Now, this is some deep philosophical stuff, and I, if I cared to look it up, I could tell you who came up with this very concept, that the universe exists because humanity observes that the universe exists. Uh, that might have been Descartes. I can't remember. We are, uh, we're, we're kind of, yeah, we're at the top of the ravine. Awesome. So, okay, now i got to start really being careful, because this is where I could easily die. Hmm. It's getting close to... close-ish to nighttime. The first issue of Rats Eating Rats was very intellectual, because it stars the main character, Black Pret, and Black Pret is a very intellectual person. Oh, he's angry. He's angrier than the Iliad. But uh, unlike most uh, characters, even in the throes of madness, he still maintains his intelligence, uh, which is unusual. When uh, people get angry, usually their heartbeat exceeds a certain limit. Uh, I believe it's... I want to say once the heart rate reaches 130 beats per minute, uh, you lose reason. Like, you you start being incapable of reasonable thought. This is why arguing is pointless, especially in a heated debate. Um, if you argue too much, uh, like, if you get too excited, basically, while you're arguing, if you lose your cool, you can't argue properly. You start not making sense. Logic doesn't, doesn't happen. That's normal. That's fine. That's, that's what, part of what being human is. Black is unusual. He uh, can get very, very angry, but he still maintains his reason no matter how excited he gets. Uh, it's his superpower, if you want to call it that. He's kind of like, a, a, honestly, what I've always wanted to be, a, a super detective who's really there for his own means. He's, he's very evil. It is, after all, rats eating rats, not, uh, not happy, fu fun, lucky time. So, his, all of his stories are going to be very... His entire world is going to be very intelligence-oriented. The second issue, of course, uh, stars the ever-lovely Red, Red Pret, uh, Black Sister. And Red is kind of the leader of her own chapter of a uh, cult called the, uh, the Sangua Vista Est. Basically, she's an action hero. Like, yeah, she's, she's the leader of this cult, but... She's an action hero. I'm, you know, face facts here. There we go. A, a huge chunk of her comic, her introduction comic, which was issue two, was action-y. There was a lot of action in it. At least as much as I could properly portray. The, um, the third issue, therefore, is going to be very spiritual and philosophical. Because that's what uh, Madge is. She's the philosopher of the bunch. Things are important to her that aren't important to, to Black or Red. Because, well, she, she actually thinks about things. Uh, what things mean. Not how they work, like Black would think. But, you know, why they're important. Which is perfect for a teenager. And, and honestly, this is, uh, this is the kind of teenager I was. I was somebody who was asking, okay, uh, I understand that mathematics is important to our world, or at least according to the teachers it is, but why? I, I don't understand the why of it. 
And eventually, I, I was lucky enough to get a math teacher that did actually explain to me. But that's that's just one example. And that's what uh, that's what Madge is going to be. She's going to be basically what I was like in high school, <laughs> which uh, is stupid because I don't know what teenagers are like nowadays. Um, hmm. I guess I'll have to work that out. Uh, I've already talked to a high school teacher and asked, okay. I don't know anything about teenagers anymore. I just know what I was like as a teenager. It'll be fun to write. And Madge is a great character. I've already finished the writing. I'm currently doing the inking. It will not be on time because I mismanaged my time. <sighs> but it will be out in October at the very least. And I will try to get issue 4 out at the beginning of November. Which will be even more important because I'm also doing the Nano Remo like I do every year. Alright. Speaking of time management, I am now out of time. Um, sorry it was so boring today. I hope my little lecture of what uh, my comic is like was uh, enough for you. And uh, I will see you guys tomorrow, and we will try to finish this tower. We are... Yeah, we're pretty much halfway there. Cool. Alright, guys. See you tomorrow.